finally got the front suspension on there pretty easy. This is the motor that we're putting in this thing. All right, so we got the motor in, we got the bars on, and we got all the accessories and the headers. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Rustom Mod. So you guys know we have a ton of project cars on the channel. We have the boosted Buick, we have our Rambler station wagon, we have our C3 Corvette, we have our Willys wagon. We got a ton of stuff that we're building right now. But one project that we started a while ago and never really got anywhere with was Patrick's four-door Nova you see behind me. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Nova, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. But basically what happened was we got the car, we got it running, and we ended up trying to do an LS swap on the thing. And unfortunately, we had a bunch of issues with the front suspension of how we were gonna do that. So I'll try to go and explain kind of what we were battling in this video. But we were filming the whole Nova project on the course of probably about a year since we last put up a video about this thing. And I wanna kind of fill you in on where we were at with this and how we got to where it is now. So in the first episode, we actually picked this thing up. This is a 65 Nova four door, it's a Chevy two Nova. And Patrick really liked this thing and he really wanted to build this. So what we wanted to do was try to find an LS, pretty affordable and do a simple swap on the thing. But that kind of snowballed a little bit to doing a full frame underneath of it and doing a bunch of cool upgrades to it, which is really awesome. So. We thought this car would be really good since it's a really solid project. So we went ahead and we did all the metal work in the back. So if you guys remember our buddy Jake, we took it to his house and he did a bunch of metal work. He did a whole trunk pan in the back. He did new frame rails all the way in the back and all that metal work is done. So that was a big help from our buddy Jake and I have those episodes up. So where we left off is we got the car back from Jake and we ended up trying to pull the front end of this thing off. Basically on a Nova, the whole front frame actually unbolts from the front of the car, which is pretty cool. So we figured why not get a newer suspension underneath the front of the car since we're doing a whole LS swap and everything like that. So what we ended up doing is yanking the motor out and we started to prep the Nova to get this whole front suspension kit. Once we got the motor out of the car, Patrick yanked the whole front clip off the Nova. So that way we could see how that front suspension was gonna mock up to the Nova body. And we did that probably about a year ago and that's kind of where it stopped. So I'll show you guys Pat pulling the whole front end of this thing off, and then I'll show you guys where we left off. So now I'm going to pull the whole front end off. You guys aren't familiar with Novas, and they're actually bolted all together. So there's bolts all through here and across the other side. So the whole front suspension, front end fenders, tires, all that stuff will pull off. Got it all finally. It was a little, uh, make me mad a little bit, but not at all. So almost a year ago, Patrick bought this front end kit and we tried to put it on and the entire front end kit needed to be re-welded and lined all the suspension up. And we just didn't have time to do all the welding and stuff on this thing because we have so many other projects we're doing. So we went to Speedway and we actually found a kit that is suited a little bit better for our application. So this is a pre-welded kit and this was actually cheaper than the one that he actually has on this thing. The Nova actually bolts on two frame rails on the front. So if we wanted to do LS mounts and rack and pinion steering, Mustang two suspension, it's really easy to do. But the problem is it's really expensive. So we found this kit on eBay and it came with all the front suspension stuff, all the control arms, knuckles, rack and pinion, and the frame rail. Problem is we had to weld this whole thing together and figure out all the geometry and stuff of how this thing bolts together. So what we ended up doing is buying this, just the frame on Speedway. And then we're going to put all the suspension that we bought from the other kit onto that one and then use the frame rails from that one Put all the suspension on and we should have a rolling Nova again. So we're gonna slap this thing on, just mock it up to see what it looks like, make sure everything is good. 
once you've had some bad experiences with junk eBay kits. Make sure everything fits and then we'll see how it looks on the Nova and finally hopefully be able to roll again. Finally got the front suspension on there, pretty easy. So just bolted the frame rails on there. Just a rough mock-up until we could get all the suspension and stuff on there so we see how everything looks. I right, get some motor mounts and then we'll put the motor in there, figure out our transmission tunnel clearance and stuff. But we gotta get this thing back on the ground with the suspension. So a few months later, we got the frame on and it's actually rolling. So what we decided to do was bring it down to my shop so that way we could just knock that thing out. Patrick has a barn that he could build that thing in, but it's a little bit nicer to do it in the shop here. We have all the tools and stuff like that and we're not working in the dirt. So we are gonna bring the Nova here and we can go ahead and final assemble that frame and that way we can test fit our new LS that we're gonna do and all the other stuff that we have for this thing. So Patrick wants to keep this thing really simple, no power steering, LS naturally aspirated and keep it really simple. He does want to run a manual transmission, so that might be something that we're going to have to tackle in a little bit. So stay tuned because you guys are going to see all the stuff we're going to do to this thing. All right, so you guys know our budget boosted Buick that we're building on the channel. Pretty awesome build. I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible, but what kind of actually started the idea for this build was this four-door Nova that Patrick got. So this is actually a 65 Chevy 2. So we're trying to do this thing on a little bit bigger budget, but actually make this thing handled, be really cool, and actually be kind of a pro touring sleeper car. Patrick's working on that, and this is the motor that we're putting in this thing. So this is actually a 6.0 that Patrick ended up buying off of one of his dad's work vans, which is pretty cool. So they retired the van, and this is actually a Gen 4, I think it was like a 2010 Chevy Silverado 2500 van, but it's a 6.0, which is cool. If you guys know anything about LS's, this is a Gen 4, so it's a little bit newer than the motor that was actually in the Buick. So it has better internals and stuff. We actually ended up putting a BFD Texas Speed cam in this thing, and we put some rocker arms and just a pretty basic setup. We did the oil pump and all that kind of stuff. We just got this thing painted because we're trying to get this thing ready to go in the Nova here. So we actually have our Speed Lab oil pan, just like the one that we have on the Buick. If you guys are interested in that oil pan, check it out. I have a discount code and also have a link in the description. But also Speed Lab has these really cool Nova headers, these long tubes that we're gonna put on this thing. They're really awesome headers for this thing. So Speed Lab also sells those. So if you guys want something like that, Go check it out. I'll have that same discount code and link below. So what we're gonna do now is we got this thing drying. We painted this thing real quick just so we can get it mocked up in the engine bay. But we're gonna try to test fit the motor. Patrick's working on disassembling the front end because we're gonna actually paint the whole front of the car before we ended up putting the motor in. That way it's all, you can see it's already starting to rust. We're gonna clean it up, make sure it's good to go. And we're gonna have the whole engine in there with the Mustang 2 front end. So we actually got our sweet patina paint that we use on the trunk. If you guys remember when we welded the whole trunk together, we used this paint, the blackout paint from sweet patina. It worked really well. So we were deciding on if we wanted to make the firewall like super smooth and really show car nice, but it's a patina car, so it doesn't have to be that big a deal. And it's gonna be a lot of work to get this thing really smooth. So we decided that this would probably be the best bet and it would probably hold up the best for our firewall. So we're actually gonna do the whole chassis with this stuff and we're gonna do the whole firewall. So we're taping that up now so we don't get all the paint on our nice suspension. We're gonna paint this thing real quick, let it dry everything off the firewall that we have to pull off so we can actually paint it pretty nice and then we can go ahead and let this thing dry and then stick it in there and then we can see how this thing looks so finally this car is coming together and it's gonna be really cool
Well, we got our engine painted. We pulled all the tape off. It actually looks really good. This engine paint is pretty nice. And then we painted our firewall with the sweet patina stuff in the frame. So this thing, we gotta let dry for a while, but it came out pretty good. Definitely covers up all the imperfections in the firewall, makes it look a lot cleaner, and our frame obviously looks pretty good. It won't rust. So we're gonna let this dry for a second, and then we're gonna try to put the motor back into the car and see how this thing looks if everything mocked up. So we do have our Speed Lab oil pan. You can get a little better look at it. This oil pan is a little bit lower profile, so that way it can clear our steering rack. The steering rack in this thing is actually really high, so it kind of interferes with the oil pan. This should have us plenty of room, so that way we can fit it. And then we got our universal motor mounts, and we have our Speed Lab headers. We want to try to test fit and see how they look. All right, so we're gonna throw these motor mounts on. We just have these universal ones, they're actually for an S10, but they work really good with this mount. They're a little too wide, but it's nice because they're slotted so we can kind of position it. And then this is kind of dry, it's almost dry to the touch. So we're gonna be careful just in case it's not completely dry and try to place it in without contacting the firewall. But we're gonna throw the motor mounts on Put the motor in there and then see how this thing looks and then we can see if how everything else will fit with the headers and the accessories. Right, Nova has an engine in it for the first time since we have gotten this thing and all that stuff. So we got it painted, we got the engine painted. It looks really good. Uh, orange really pops with the blue and the black and stuff. So now we're gonna go ahead and stick on our water pump and all of our accessories and see how that stuff fits. Running the ICT billet kit is nice, it's affordable. So we're gonna throw that stuff on real quick and then it'll really fill it up. We can put our headers on and see how this thing looks. And one concern I guess is clearance with the steering rack. You can kind of see it better now, what I was talking about. So the Speed Lab oil pan fits really good. We measured the other one, it actually came down another inch. So it would have hit the steering column here. The other concern is where the steering shaft comes out of the rack is kind of tight here with our headers. So we'll have to see how that's gonna look and how we're gonna make a steering column for that. But we're gonna put these uh, ICT billet kit stuff on here first, and then we'll go ahead and see how that looks. And then we can put our headers on. All right, so we got our accessories, we got our headers on, we got everything painted, we got the motor in there. So it is hitting our, I guess you would call that like the frame a little bit. So we might have to massage that some, but obviously these are just kind of a guess to what we were gonna grab. And it works pretty good. The steering fits like, like it's tucked back enough where that would work. Yeah, if you guys just kind of imagine this would come up, well, you know, it would come up through that way, like so. And then we would just have a universal somewhere right in here. You have miles of room. Yeah, so it's tucked back. So that way we can come straight up here, right to our steering column. And that would work pretty easily, actually. So the motor's in, we got the headers on, pretty good progress. And we have the entire new front suspension and stuff. The only thing we gotta do is put those bars on the front, but that'll pretty much be it. All right, so we got the motor in, we got the bars on, and we got all the accessories and the headers. Looks pretty good, making pretty good progress on this thing. This thing's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot that it really needs since it's not running any accessories and stuff. So we really only need to finish the front and then we gotta move on to the transmission. Yeah, we're actually running a TR6060, so Pat's gonna have to probably figure out how this thing's gonna sit. We're gonna get a transmission mount and then we might have to massage the transmission tunnel for it to be able to work. We'll have to see how it's gonna look. But for now, we at least have the engine sitting in there. 
so that way when we bolt the trans on we can know where it's going to be and the trans is going to really dictate where the placement is of the engine wherever that trans mount sits so that's why we have these slotted so you can move the motor forward and back to reposition it but it should be pretty simple so once we get the trans mount on we can figure out what we're going to do with that but for now that's pretty much where the nova is at Alright guys, well we got the motor in the Nova and we got our full front suspension and everything else on this thing. It's really coming along. It has been a stalled project but we're starting to make momentum on it and it should be pretty cool once we're done with this thing. So the next step is we got to figure out what the transmission and all the other stuff that we have to do to this thing. But that's going to be in a future episode of Rust Abide. So if you like this kind of content, stay tuned. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff like it. So make sure you like, comment, kind of subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the builds we have here on Rust Abide. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next episode.